you for joining us. Thank you, my friend uh, Karan Bilimoria, the Chancellor of uh, University of Birmingham and also son of Hyderabad, as Gareth put it. Thank you very much for making this happen. This conversation started um, almost a year plus ago. Now I'm glad that this has materialized. Gareth, as always, a great friend. Thank you. Thank you for um, keeping your speech short as well. Thank you very much. And also thank you for looping in. Uh, thank you for looping in Karan. That was a lovely message. I have to compliment you on that. Jay Sanjan, my principal secretary. Um, also our honorable MLA, Sri Jeevan Redigaru. I'll come to you last, Jimmy, because I have a few things to say. Our, our chairman of TSTPC, um, Bhikshu Patigaru. And um, of course, the man who's donated, uh, you know, the man who's come forward, the group which has come forward, Carrier. Thank you, Jimmy. But like I said, you ought to be doing more, a lot more. You cannot be cheap, I have to, I have to say that. You have to donate more. This can't be the first and only sustainable cooling solution uh, in India. We need more of these. We need uh, many more of these, actually. You know, when Professor Toby Peters welcomed us this morning, a lot of us sitting here, we lose sight of some basic things, you know. We're all seated here in an air-conditioned room powered by, I don't know what company that is. I'm presuming it's Carrier, but I'm not sure if it is. But we're all, we're all used now to conditioned air. I remember this experience of mine. Uh, I was a student in college uh, in Pune. So we were traveling to a hill station, me and my mates, and we were all on a local train. So there was this girl, a friend of mine, a classmate, who actually came in from Mauritius to study with us. She was, she was in Pune. So the minute we got into this local train, we were all going to, I think it was Matheran or, I don't know, Kandala or one of these places, the hill stations. Somebody, like in India, we are very used, uh, you know, back then, we have these local trains which only have fans, right? So somebody just turned on a fan. That fan was a hard-hitting fan, very, very hard-hitting fan, and it was like direct into your face. So this girl immediately goes, I can't give her name because I'm sure she's watching somewhere. Um, she immediately goes, please turn that off. I said, why? She says, I'm not used to air hitting me. I'm used to conditioned air. That was the first time in my life I've ever realized that the whole AC thing could be flipped and it could be called conditioned air. So thanks to you guys, now everybody in the world knows what conditioned air is and now we are actually so conditioned to think that there is no substitute. But the fact is, like you guys have said it, Kirby like Professor Toby Peters was saying, all the air conditioners that we use today, more than the cooling that they offer, the heat that they generate outside of it, is actually much more. I, I hope I got that right, Professor. Now, the challenge here and what we're trying to do here is basically ensuring that these cooling solutions actually cut down on carbon emissions and actually are more sustainable. Now, that's the challenge, that's the dream as we move forward. How do we do that? How can we make it happen? And thankful to GMR, thankful to Kishore Garu for you know, giving us this facility. This center of excellence on sustainable cooling and cold chain is a joint collaboration, as I was saying, between government of Telangana, Center for Sustainable Cooling, University of Birmingham, and the United Nations Environment Program. Why is this important? It's important because Hyderabad, Telangana, India is, of course, the pharma capital of the world, is, of course, the vaccine capital of the world. But more importantly, what COVID has shown us, what the pandemic has shown us, is two things. Food security is important, and so is availability and accessibility of medicines. I think both have been showcased to the entire world and cutting across geographies, cutting across cities, states, etc. Humans have realized that these two are mission critical for us to survive on this planet, both medicine and of course food. Now, to keep both of these relevant, to keep both of these, you know, uh, constantly available, Cold chain is extremely important. But how do we make sure that the cold chain becomes sustainable? How do we make sure that our air conditioners actually don't create more heat than cooling that they offer? That's where sustainability kicks in. That's where University of Birmingham has joined us. Our Honorable Chief Minister, Sri K. Chandrasekhar Garu, he always tells us one thing. He always says, you know, 
even if you switch off everything on the planet in terms of operations, in terms of what we do in industry and elsewhere, we cannot switch off agriculture. Primarily because if you switch off agriculture, you would be left with no food, right? But more importantly, as India moves up the value chain, India starts producing and becomes a uh, you know, surplus nation in terms of food. We need also newer solutions, new packaging solutions, more processing solutions. But the key again is to ensure that all of these again are sustainable. This initiative is actually first of its kind in India. It is inspired by the success and learnings of a similar initiative in Africa. And now we will follow a hub and spoke model with the hub and national center being located in Hyderabad. And spokes, of course, covering rural communities in the states and hopefully other regions through a network of specialized outreach and knowledge establishments that will facilitate the deployment of technologies and innovative business models. The aim of this cold chain center of excellence is to facilitate accelerated deployment of needs-driven and equitable system-level cooling solutions in Telangana and India to meet the current and the future needs of cooling for all, to promote technology solutions that help cut down the food losses, improve temperature control supply chains, and boost, most importantly, exports. Because, like Garrett said, if we are able to create a win-win solution for the people who feed us, the farmers, I think this center would really be meeting its objective. Today, we see a center here with state-of-the-art equipment and a one-stop solution for the challenges around cold chain ecosystem. In phase one of this project, the focus would be on post-harvest practices, food and health cold chains. In phase two, the scope would be extended to include thermal comfort, electronics, and possibly data centers as well. The center will also have a solution development laboratory, solutions demonstration center, model pack house, and community hub, all of these of course for demonstrative experience, for industry to come, explore, and I'm sure the academia here would be more than happy, including University of Birmingham and also other uh, important academic institutions here in the state would be more than happy, I'm sure, to contribute to learn and to continue to build on what we've started. More importantly, the expected impacts of phase one of this center will be to increase income of farmers by enhancing the value of their products, enhancing the ability to store in a better fashion, to increase market access, and to reduce food losses. Second, but not any less important, improve access to health services, vaccines, blood, insulin, etc. Improve temperature control supply chain to boost exports and imports, both for food and health, by reducing investment and operational losses, operational costs. Develop and demonstrate cooling technologies and solutions that meet the state's needs and could be scaled up for global outreach. Now I can go on and tell you a lot of things that we have done in the last nine years in terms of boosting our ability to export more, create more agri uh, products from our state. But I'll confine myself and I'll tell you one thing. I think as a developing nation, as a growing country, if India has to move forward, if India really has to find its place in the first world in an expeditious manner, we need more partnerships, we need more collaborations, and I'm delighted that India and UK are forging ahead. And we need goodwill ambassadors like my friend, Karan Bilimoria, you know, whose heart beats for India and UK. And I'm sure that he would be very happy, um, you know, knowing that this partnership has now made its first, st has taken a first step, made a fantastic beginning. Look forward uh, to working closely with you, Professor Toby, and look forward to more and more of the industry, I see industry representatives here, more and more of the industry coming forward to pick up these best practices and helping our farmers, helping our citizens, you know, achieve that scale, achieve those solutions. Thank you very much. Jai Telangana. Thank you so much, sir.